Hi, this is Joe with CJ Goods. We've got all sorts of materials out today for the rocket slash bomb pattern. I've got paints because I'm going to be doing some stuff with the veg tan. Um, that's what the palette is for, the brushes. I've got my scissors as usual. I've got a whole bunch of different hole punches. I will be also using the prongs in order to do some um, detail work. I've got rivet setters, uh, double si stick tape, hammer, and thread. As always, the first thing you got to do is make sure that your pattern has printed properly. I've got a two inch size square. If it's not two inches, you need to double check that your settings are correct on your printer. Okay, um, first thing I got to do is cut things out and mark the holes. I said I was going to do the bomb with a flange and make it a dice cup. This is going to be a piece I definitely cut out. This is a rocket one. It's a bit pointier. It's less shallow of a tip. I'm not going to end up using this because I'm just going to use the rocket as the cup, uh, the pencil cup. Now here's a little trick. Since I'm not going to be putting the cap on the top of the rocket, but I know I'm going to be doing it as a long body, I'm only going to cut out this piece right here and leave this off. So I'm going to cut this. Now I have all the pieces I need. Here's what I'm going to separate. I've got my rocket fins, and that's my bomb fin. This is going to go with my bomb. This is going to go with my rocket. This will go with my bomb, and this will be used on both pieces. I have a roll of veg tan. That's two ounce. It's perfect for making the bomb. Uh, it's the smaller one. It's a very stiff hand. It'll take the paint well, and I'm going to do um, something that looks like a little bit from the bomb, uh, the mini nukes from Fallout. And then for the rocket that I'm going to use, I've got some beautiful scraps of a shimmery leather, which I'll use for the fins. And because this is a much softer piece of leather, what I'll have to do is I'll have to sandwich it around something thicker, and I'll probably end up, or sorry, stiffer. I have a little bit of veg stain here. That's about the right size. I'll sandwich in between. And that way you can see a little bit about how reinforcing the leather can work. And then for the body of that rocket, I'm going to use this beautiful shiny patent leather. It's what I use for my prototype. I don't have a red hanging around, unfortunately, which is what I was really looking forward to. Just a bright cherry red. So we'll use this instead today. And that way I only have to paint one project versus two.
first ones I'm going to do are my rivets. I know what size my rivets are going to be. I'm going to do it on this one. And all of my fins are going to be joined by rivets. No rivets on this. No rivets on this yet, but here's what I'm going to need to do. So this is going to go like this in the end. It's going to get stitched in like this. Now I want to do something extra silly in order to do this one. I want to put portholes on the side of my rocket. So that means I'm going to take some of the silver and use my really large punch. This one is an inch in diameter. And I'm going to punch a hole there and then I'm going to punch the inner hole in order to do this. Here's what you want to do in order to fit the fins through. The whole punch that you want is going to have to be... Oh, oh, these are all... It's inside. Okay. Wide enough to accept whatever you're putting through. Double layered. Okay. And I'm going to make sure that I don't overdo it. There is going to be another piece that's going to make these stiffer so they aren't as floppy. So what can stand on its tips. So I'm going to find the right size hole punch for this. I do. Yeah, I'll go with that one. And punch it, these holes here, using this punch. Same thing goes for the bomb version of this. These are the fins on this. They're going to get folded in half like this and then slid through those slots. So it's going to look like that in the end. So this is the hole that you're cutting here, the slot. If you look on the measurement pattern, these are the holes that we're looking at here. Okay, We're going to be cutting this slit between those holes now. Last set of holes I have to mark here. It's going to be these. And I'm going to use a couple of stitches just to hold things still so I can get it as accurate as possible. The idea is now I have this steady. So we're going to figure out where to put my holes and if I need to trim my flange a little bit more. So I'm just going to go ahead and mark my hole. Right through the existing letter. And I think I'm going to cut this. a fraction more so it fits that little bit better. So my goal is to turn these into portholes on the sides. I'm going to use double stick tape and my prongs in order to stitch these on. And since it's already black leather, 
I'm gonna head use my black thread since I don't have any gray. So that's gonna be one step in this. And the other step is building these fins. Now I've kept my fin pattern here and you'll see that there's these dotted lines. These pieces of leather are really flimsy on their own. If you're using something much heavier than I am as far as having a stiff hand, you're not gonna to need to do this reinforcement. Even if I glue these two together, I don't feel comfortable that it's gonna sustain the weight of the rocket when I put it on its tips. So we're gonna use this leather, which is a veg tan. It's a bit stiffer. It'll hold the glue quite nicely. And what I wanna do is glue a piece on either side. So I'm gonna glue one down, cut it to shape, glue the other side down, and then give it some nice stitching. So what I've done here is I've glued the fin down on one side and I've cut it short of the holes so you can still see the holes in this because what's going to happen is it's going to flare out when I go to put it into the pattern uh, when I go to assemble it. So the next thing I'll do is once I've cut all these out, make sure these line up and glue it down. Now this glue dries pretty quick, but I'm also just gonna keep doing a stitch line because I like the idea of putting a black to keep these on and a black to do a stitch around here. But first I wanna see how badly this sandwich went as far as matching. So I'm gonna trim just a little bit. Now for the boring part, lots of sewing. I've already stitched these guys here, and so I'm gonna teach you a couple things really fast. Start on the top and then work your way to the inside. And do just a couple back stitches. You can sort of see where there's double it over here, and that'll just give it a nice finished look. I've chosen to do the portholes with these extra colors on the outside because I wanted it to match the fins. You could have taken and used an actual metal grommet or eyelet in order to do these portholes. Um, just a stylistic thing. I wanted to match as well. I knew I'd be stitching on the portholes, so I wanted to have the stitching match on the fins. The leather probably with the glue would have held up just fine. Again, just a stylistic thing I wanted to go for. Give you guys some idea of options you can use. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew the fins on. So what you've got to do is fit them, probably easier to go from the back, through, and then I'm going to flay these and stitch it so that they're smooth with the holes here. Now this is going to force these pieces to curve like this. It's important to stitch on the fins before we start doing these stitches to hold the pieces together and make this a round object. Sorry, curved object. So yeah, this is the next thing.
So it looks a little bit like a shark fin right now. And it is trying to curve this leather ever so much because it's pulling out. Now you can see too where this veg tan is in the middle and it's sandwiched by these two gray pieces. All these are gonna be like that and that's why I didn't glue past a certain point because I know I've gotta stitch these holes in. Alright, so you're going to start in this valley right here and go from inside okay, and you're going to go around so each of these comes back in and you get a double stitch on the outside. Okay, and pull tight. It's going to be a little enough contrast here, even with the fact I'm using black on black because one's a little bit shinier than the other. I'm going to take my right needle and I'm going to go through the next hole on the left. And then across. And I'm going to switch needles and it goes from the hole I just came out of with my right needle. And go across and back in the left hole. So you can end up with an X pattern on the inside and you end up with this stitch on the outside. Okay. Repeat until so you get all the way to the tip here. It's pretty loose, so I'm going to tighten it up by pulling on the outside laces and using my needle as a lever. You can get these pretty even if you can. I must have pierced that one. Let's see if I can fix that. gotten to the tip of this one. Now I'm going to try to bring in the tip of the next one and work my way down into that valley. So here's where it gets a little funky. I've got this on the right here. So it's coming out. I'm going to have to go up through on this side. So the needles are both going through the same hole adjacent to where they're going to go through the valley here. I'm going to go top down from the outside and bottom up from the inside. And I try not to pierce the thread where you can avoid it. Okay. All right, and then because I want to have a double stitch here, it's going to go oops, down like that. All right, so now you have a nice little square pattern that's going to happen here. Hopefully you can make that out. There it is. Okay. And then it's going to be down through one hole. So you have that cross stitch and sideways parallel stitch. And you got to get caught up in the fins because there's things sticking out underneath where you're working. So both needles now are on the inside. I'm going to clean up this mess that I've made on the outside, make sure everything is tight from the tip down. 
I'll use my all this time to pull things tight. Pierced a couple times though because I'm not happy with what's happened on the inside here. There we go. You do have to fiddle with this just a little bit, unfortunately. That's why this one is more of an advanced intermediate versus a beginner pattern. you want to have some experience with sewing in order to get this to be less confusing. All right, I'm on the inside. Beautiful double knot just to tie it off. Right over left. Try not to drop your needles. Right over left. Left over right. So that is there to there, all right? Next one, you're gonna start in the valley again here. And as I get towards the tip here and back down, I'm make sure to introduce this piece. Now just for good measure, I'm gonna mark the hole that corresponds so I know when to introduce this piece here. It's part of the flange, it's gonna keep your going to keep this lined up so instead of trying to fold like this and have a nice bend it's going to try to keep it a little bit flatter so you keep more of a rounded shape here. I've now gotten to where I add this in. So here's where things become a little bit harder, easier. I'm gonna take this and run my needle through the first hole here. And this is gonna be the right side that I'm coming out of. You can see this needle is coming out of that hole over here on this side. So I'm gonna go through the right side and then up through this hole. Take the other needle and do the other side. <sighs> Helps if I don't knot myself funky around the leather that I'm working with. Okay. This is gonna go up through this hole. So now I don't need to cross anymore. I can actually just do a running stitch. So what's gonna happen is to keep this same style here, I have two options. I can keep doing a stitch like this or I can just have one stitch on either side. I'm gonna go ahead and keep having the same double stitch that I had before. So from now on, I'm just gonna go from one side to the other, and then up straight without going diagonal underneath. It's the inside. This is why you take way more thread than you think you need for a project. So you don't have this particular problem. Now, if you look on mine, it doesn't line up absolutely perfectly. You can see that the stitching here, this tip is a little higher than that and the flange is sticking out. I'm just gonna correct that with a little bit of prodigious scissor use here. 
And now my rocket is done. Okay. I'm getting set up here to paint my uh, bomb. And I want to sort of make it look like the mini nukes from Fallout. So I've got my guide here that I've just sketched on my crap paper. Um, I'm going to do the cap in red. So this area is going to be red in here. The tails are going to have some red on them. I'll do a yellow stripe in here, in this middle portion here. And then everything else is going to be green. So I have a guide and so what I'm doing is I'm taping off the areas I don't want to be the contrast color. So the first thing I'm going to do is paint with a green and I'll have to mix that up because I only have primary colors. This is all going to be green. This is all going to be green. These exposed parts are going to be green. So I'm going to tape these off as well in about the same place. Okay, I'm not sure where that video cut out, but we'll find out later. Meanwhile, I'm going to get back to painting. I'm going to be adding this in. This was not in the pattern that I printed out and cut out earlier in the video. Um, it will be on the version that you've downloaded from my Etsy shop. This is going to make it so that the cap sits really nice and clean and when you tighten the threads it doesn't pull these into funny ways and are underneath each other. So that's going to be there. Uh, I'm putting this before the rest of the sewing for things like the rocket bottom. I don't have one of these caps sitting in there, but I'm including it in the patterns. Once I get to this last stitch of the nose, I'm going to put my piece in here. So you still maintain that pattern of the X's on the inside and the cross stitching on the outside. Be careful not to pierce your thread because it will not pull tight properly if you do. 
So I've spaced my hole so you get a nice, clean, tight line right there. Now I'm going to do this seam here. So this is going to cross underneath here and go out over the top. Oop, I'm trying not to lose my thread. Grab that cap there and down in. Now we're going to start in this valley here, go up to the peak, come down the side, and tie a knot just on the inside here. Yeah, now I'm gonna rivet these guys right in here. 